Hi there, friends. So we've been doing some choice grid how-tos. This is more of a behind the scenes. I think a lot of times we see the fancy end product, but we wanted to share some of the messy thinking behind the design uh, and how the designs have evolved. So when we first um, explored, we really were looking at how could we bring those provocations and invitations in the library learning commons to a digital space. So how could we provoke inquiry, um, spark curiosity, um, spark making and exploring. So we kind of came up with those three templates to get us started and people have created so many cool different variations over time. So Melanie and I started talking about what would that look like? Um, what would the next iteration look like? So we really at the core we had that idea of the inquiry process um, and that inquiry stance but we also wanted to make sure embedded in each was that choice and voice of learners. So we started with the animation grid um, and then went on to stable structures. So with structures, we knew we wanted, there's so much children learn through actually creating, uh, but we also wanted to spark their thinking around structures. So instead of squishing everything on one page, um, we thought really breaking those three parts of exploring, then creating and reflecting into each of um, their own pages, uh, but still keeping the number of clicks low. We know any user of any age, if there's too many clicks, they just get lost. So under exploring, the hardest part here was really curating a good collection. So we were focusing on grade three, um, and Melanie and I had looked at different resources um, and were trying to curate the best. Some of it was hard though, because to be honest, I thought structures was going to be a piece of cake. Um, there's structures all around us. But really focusing in with that grade three lens um, and thinking about what would entice them. I know to me, if it feels really old, it must feel really old to the kids. Uh, so although there's a lot out there, a lot of it was dated. So we were trying to find um, current engaging resources um, to spark that conversation about a stable structure. We're also trying to match it to those overall, um, those big ideas in the science curriculum. Uh, so over time, it was kind of interesting to see how the group came together. Uh, we really also were looking for different formats so that it wasn't just video or just reading. So again, we're um, catering to the variety of learning styles of our learners. So I loved, um, these here are just visuals, so really for kids to explore and with 360 view they're able to look all around. We also wanted to counteract um, that structures are just homes or buildings, so bringing in those bridges, um, but also bringing in natural structures. This was so hard to do. Uh, I found this awesome video about bees being efficient with hexagons on TED Ed. Uh, it w I was so excited. But really, when we reflected on it, it was just um, a great fit for grade six and seven, maybe, uh, but not necessarily for grade three. So that's where another colleague, um, Christine, came in and found this amazing video of hummingbirds building their nest. And then at the end of the clip, it actually shows different types of nests. So it's a great piece for us to look at stable structures and that nature and animals build stable structures as well, but also seeing that diversity. Uh, this was a last minute addition um, about cups and stable structures. And she actually had several videos, but we chose this one because there's some great uh, provocations in the video that talk about movement and how you can kind of explore stability with your body. So again, a great kinesthetic way for our learners to explore stable as a concept. Again, there's so much we can do, uh, explore around structures, but really building stable structures um, is another piece. And I really wanted to make sure that kids um, had that freedom to design their own stable structure I still don't know if it would have been better as a, as a box on the grid if kids won't see it as an equal option. Uh, and then also thinking about what kids have access to at home. So the Roman arch uses ice, um, rock, paper, and scissors uses paper and rocks, uh, spaghetti. But also uh, there's a game on the page. 
because we know some kids may not have access to any of those materials uh, and the technology may be the only thing they have access to. So playing the game can still give them some of that feel with um, no matter what kind of material they have access to. And instead of trying to document every piece um, or trying to collect an artifact, we really were thinking about that reflection stage and thinking um, how could that um, both capture student thinking and a product of student learning and that conversation, but also drive further designs. So when we open the form, just as a simple tool, um, looking at them sharing, so that conversation piece, uh, um, and we could create that as a drop, um, as a Dropbox and have them actually attach something that they created. Uh, again, that conversation piece with what's something that they've learned as they were exploring, but also asking a question so that we're getting that feedback for ourselves and for that next iteration and what that could look like. So that's kind of where our learning has come so far, and we can't wait to see where it goes next. <laughs>